Welcome back, everybody, to Shoot a Whiskey. My name is Austin. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Now, you might be asking yourself, Shoot a, it's, uh, it's Friday. And, yeah, I am deciding to try something new today that I would like to call uh, Friday Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to go with Friday Friday. Pretty much, this is just going to be a day where I review Rise. Now, this isn't going to be a weekly thing that we're going to be doing very often, but it's something I'm wanting to include as there are some rides that deserve to be showcased and this would be the day that I'm going to be doing those on. So don't expect this to be a part of the weekly Whiskey Wednesdays. Expect this to just be here and there along with other se or series I am also trying to incorporate into this channel. With that, today we are reviewing something a little bit special. This one, the Ascot's Best in Class, which is why I'm not showing it up here yet. Um, but you might have already guessed, with today being Friday Friday, what we're going to be reviewing. And it is... Penhook 8-Year Rye. Uh, I've had this bottle for a little bit. I got it as soon as it came out, before I even saw the Ascot's release. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. And yeah, this batch was 32 barrels. And... Doing the rough math, that probably means we got about less than 10 grand uh, bottles released this year. I don't think they released numbers. I don't think there's any bottled numbers actually on this. It's not. But I also believe this is the highest proof they have released in this series for the Tizrai. So that's pretty cool. One thing to note as well, this was an original project where they started at 450 barrels for the rye. I can't remember off the top of my head for the bourbon where they started at, but from ages 4 all the way till 12, they're going to be doing a yearly release to see how bourbon ages. And I think this is an excellent way for people to get behind a good following. I think Sean Joseph chose a beautiful idea to do this with a rye and a bourbon since that is kind of the big hits right now in the whiskey community in America at least. So with that, let's go ahead and pour this bad boy and review it and talk about it. Very, 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 I mean, there is nothing going on here. There is nothing going on here. Just hold on, third time's the charm nothing going on here all right well that was a very mediocre uh cork pop but let's go ahead and listen to the glug no glug either which is a-okay god that cork just does not want to go in so let's go ahead and get into the nose here All right, immediately on the nose, we're getting this piney oak note that I get on a lot of rye's. No pickle note. I know this sounds really weird, but I tend to get this like vinegary pickle note on some rye's, and honestly a majority of rye's. So I'm very picky when I'm choosing a rye, but I don't get that here. I get pine, oak, like pine trees in the summer, and like you ever rub your fingers against a pine tree and then smell it? It's got this like, obviously you got the oak smell, but then you got this like fruity uh, pebble, fruit loop, fruity sweetness in it. And that's what I'm getting on this right now. Getting a little bit of cinnamon, maybe a blackberry, very faint caramel. I think that's it. Overall, a really, really good nose to start with. I mean, the blackberry with the pine note and the caramel. And the oak so far I am this is my jam right now this is my jam now one note that I thought was very prevalent in the years prior to this was like this apple apricot note with like pie crust and it's there in this bottle but it is very subdued it's kind of starting to take its own character the more it ages and it's starting to spread away from the original notes that I got from four five six and seven I was not a big fan of six. I don't know why. I may need to revisit it. But this is darker oak, 
blackberry notes. Maybe a little bit of molasses. No, it's caramel. That's caramel. Overall, really good nose. So let's go ahead and get into the palette here. Oh yeah. Wow. Nice Kentucky hug. Ooh. Mmm. That is... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Before we even talk about the palette here, this bottle is obviously MGP juice. So, straight out of Indiana. But it's bottled by the Kentucky Artesian Distillery in Crestwood, Kentucky. But, last I know is that they aged their stuff at Castle and Key, which is the old E.H. Taylor... Uh, distillery so they store them there so Castle and Key has been kind of renting it out uh, to help them afford whatever projects they got next hopefully no more of what that first release was because Castle and Key's first release was a big old not very good Ooh, all right let's get back into the palette here that blackberry note and the mixed fruit note that you get from the piney nose note is there across the board not a lot of oak there is a good bit of cinnamon and it's a little bit bready and that's what you would expect on a rye. So overall this is turning and shaping out to be really, really good. Let's go in for another sip. Same notes, a little bit more caramel, a little bit more spice forward in that sip. But as it goes to the back of your palate, you start getting this oak and it's a little bit tannicky, not going to lie, kind of worrisome but you get this nice little tannic, semi-sweet oak in the back of your palate. That is really, really good. It makes me worried though, for the next nine, 10, 11, 12, four years that we have left of this product is where is that oak note gonna go? So I guess we'll see. My son just woke up and he's looking at me. So I'm really hoping I can get through this recording uh, without him starting to laugh and giggle at me. Cause as soon as I'm done recording this, I'm going to go back to playing with them. Oh, dude, that nose is just infatuating. It is blackberry, fruit cocktail, pine notes, oak. I feel like this is something you would take camping with you because it would just encompass all the great notes that you would be encountering while you're camping. And he is being really patient right now. So we got to speed this up, boys. Let's go in for our final tasting here. Yeah. That is delicious. That oak note is starting to become a lot more prevalent, a lot more barrel char. That blackberry note is delicious. My son is waking up. Everything about this bottle I thoroughly enjoy. I think what I paid for it was $80. It was either $80 or $90. So still that sub $100 category. I think this is 100% worth it. I think this is something that if you see in the store at retail, which I don't think there's any secondary market for this, and you like rye, 100% a buy. Coming in at 108.4 proof, I mean, it's just right there in the sweet spot. 107 to 115 is right in that sweet spot for me, and that crushed it, 100%. Wow. That is really good. A lot of dark notes in it. This is something I will be coming back to every year, just the when the pen hook next release comes out. It's just like, all right, let's double check with the eight. The seven was really good too. So if you see the seven, I would recommend they're very different. The seven is a lot lighter, where this is a lot darker. So you can kind of see the difference in how much a year affects this bottle. So yeah, I'm gonna be fact checking every year after that with an eight year or a seven year and just say, just to see where it's going if it's going in a good direction or a bad direction, then. So yeah. I hope you guys, re I really enjoyed that nose. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I know it was a little bit of a quick one, uh, even quicker than our Wednesday review, but I really wanted to push out some Rye Day Friday content. This is something I've been thinking about for a little bit as I really enjoy some Rye's. Um, so yeah, again, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Comment what you guys are gonna be enjoying on this Friday afternoon and let me know on Instagram as well if you don't want to comment. 
So yeah, with that, make sure you guys go over to my Instagram right now, drop a follow, send me a DM. I want you to send me your favorite daily and your favorite all-time pour. Just curious what people are out there uh, supporting right now and what their favorite stuff is. So with that, hope you guys have a great day. Hope you guys have a great Friday, Friday. Maybe go enjoy a ride today. Go look at a ride and be like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. My son is waking up, so I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.